action. Man, why doesn't Kamala like kids, bro? <laughs> why she don't like no kids? She started off the speech talking about reproductive rights. And if you don't know translation to reproductive rights, that means the erased children. And she is a person who doesn't even have children of her own. So I'm just like wondering, hey, Kamala, why have, why are you going to war against babies? What they did to you? Hey, man, I ain't going to lie. That, that is totally blowing my mind. Like, she doesn't have kids of her own. So when I see them little white kids out there, I'm like, damn, you know. <laughs> and she's just a hodgepodge of all America. I see y'all, you know, definitely charging up for being black. But it's like, okay, you see that? Like, oh, she don't even have kids. Hey, man, the Democratic Party is built on debauchery. And that's the crazy part about this thing is, listen to that speech of course i can hear the good points in it but like you were saying when i heard reproductive rights when i heard certain aspects of that speech i was like oh this is all about debauchery love who you want to love it's like that's where everybody is the most excited about instead of true american policy which is what we should be discussing like okay hey i understand that you want to support debauchery but what are you really doing for me? What are we really going to do for this country? America doesn't exist in isolation. Like, we're in competition with the rest of the world. While we're chilling, trying to have fun and go on vacation and everything, everyone else is having babies, increasing their population, uh, increasing the size of their militaries. And we over here having conversations about it, my body, my choice. If we're going to have that type of conversation, we should be having a conversation about family planning. How do you build a family? How do we make sure that people have enough money to raise children? Like having a baby, you should not make a decision not to have a baby because you ain't got no money. Well, I'm finna go give this baby away to the adoption center because I ain't got no money. That's crazy as hell. But you won't talk about women being poor. Instead of talking about women, American women specifically, not having no money to, to, um, to take care of their children, you want to have a conversation about deleting babies. And that's a crazy conversation, man. It, there's no there's no true conversation about abstinence. There's no true conversation about, okay, having children that's in a the wild family conversation. structure. It's a wild conversation, but it's like, what's the alternative? It's like at the end of the day, if we're saying that, okay, what we're basically telling women is you go fuck how you want to fuck and we can have an abortion because what's the whole need of having an abortion? Why would you need to have an abortion if you were not having sex? So if you don't want a kid that bad, like in life, you ain't going to have everything you want. You got to give. It's a give or take. This motherfucker is really a give or take. Why don't we understand that? Have and you I, ever seen the whatever podcast? No. On the whatever podcast, they have millions of subscribers, right? But it's just a man sitting there talking to women. And these young women, like they, they're young and they're beautiful. I could only imagine that everywhere I go, that every person wants to have, like, talk to me. I'm the, I'm the it conversation. I'm just the prettiest thing in town. And if you're a young woman and you're halfway pretty and you're not obese and you're pleasant to be around, you can almost have any man you want, at least uh, in an intimate way for the night, right? You can. That's a reality. That's a reality. That's a whole lot of power. Now they, they're not they saying this shit pretty privileged. And y'all want to put these cute ass terms on shit that's like this. Look, when a, when a, when a bitch fine. And, and excuse me for saying the word bitch. I want to be I want to be not disrespectful. I want to be respectful, but I say it in, in in a respectful manner and love. You know what I'm saying? Uh, bitches that are fine <laughs> can get anything they want. <laughs> like when you think about these women in the '90s, not fuck the BBL era. I'm talking about when women was like Holly Berry, dog. Of course she gonna get a certain type of nigga. Of course Jasmine guy and all these bad, and they're not fat, but and they look a certain with way. With acknowledging the objective truth. Like, for you to even have to explain that is so weird. I know when I can compete and when I can't compete, I can't go to the NBA. And I can't get mad at LeBron James for being six foot, 30 feet tall. That's just reality, right? And so just because you was born with an average face and an average body, you can't get mad at the bad lady who looks so beautiful. This is nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. And I don't even, so like, since we've pushed this, this ideology about women can do whatever they want with themselves, I have a question. Can the American man, when you were 18 years old, you had to go and sign up for selective services, didn't you? You do. It's mandatory. If mandatory. You're, so I, I don't have, I had no autonomy over my body as a man in America. And so that means that I have to be of service to my nation no matter what. And so I'm asking the American woman, how are you, how are you required to be of service? Because we we have to be in of service in different ways. The way I, I'm in, the way I'm of service is I go to war. The way you're of service, you have babies. Is that so crazy? Is that so crazy, man? <laughs> I had a question, right? The question was, 
How many bodies does your woman have? Oh, man. What kind of sniper is she, hey. huh? I want a plan A and plan B. How many she got? Hey, listen. <laughs> Look, when we when we schooling and teaching. Is that nasty? And uplifting a woman in her mental, that's not misogynistic. See, they didn't got the game fucked up to where we're educating you and telling you, hey, why are you not fulfilling your role? You're so incomplete because you're not fulfilling your role. You're trying to be something that you aren't. And when you're trying to be something that you aren't, you're causing chaos. I want to push that button, though. I want to push that button right there. I asked the question. I said, why does Kamala hate children? Why do American women hate children so much? Oh, man. Hey. If you talk to your woman and you have an actual personal conversation, you're going to find a baby graveyard. She might tell you like seven, <laughs> eight, nine of them that never got to see life. That's true. And we're pushing this ideology. That's true. Man, I love children. I got four of them. You hear me? I got six. And I, I hug them every chance that I get. And so you, the, the government can control me because I'm on child support for all four of them. You hear me? The government can control my body, but then we have a, you can tell the woman, this is how we treat women in America, right? We going to pay women to have babies through welfare and, and, and uh, WIC, women, infants, and children and things of this nature. And then we going to tax you. <laughs> We're not promoting family. We're promoting chaos. That I, I interrupted you when you was hitting the, the chaotic point because it's chaos in America right now. That's all I saw. A, a, a Indian woman running for president of the United States of America, and she's pretending to be black, and it's so crazy. Now, this is where we may differ. We're going to line up. Go ahead, Because we already had our convo off, off, off camera, run so it. we know we line up. But this is where, let's, let's address the blackness. I want to show y'all how foolishness, how foolish it is to buy into the race theory, to buy into who's black or not. Break it down. Because we can't even determine who's really black. We really can't. So it's like, I'm going to give you a prime example. Drake is said to be a culture vulture, but his dad is a foundational black man. He's more black than Kamala. So how the fuck is she reversing it and saying they not like us when y'all just said that he would? That is based off of Drake. And guess what? His daddy is a foundational black man. What do I mean by that? Now, you have an, the, the conversation you have right now is very important. And for Drake, his daddy was a musician from Tennessee, an actual black man. The conversation that Kendrick is having about Drake is simply because, hey, Drake, bro, you was raised by your mama and you was doing plays and stuff like that. And then you ran to Houston and you came to strip club culture <laughs> and then you got hot. And then you ran to Atlanta and then you got hot turd. OK, it, you wasn't born into this. It wasn't ingrained in you. I know your daddy is. That's your daddy. You ain't your daddy. But the thing is. your daddy is. Now, this is alleged. I don't know if this has been factually checked, but allegedly he does look like Larry Graham. You know, Larry Graham supposed to be, I think, his uncle or something like that, because that's the brother. I'm getting somewhere. There's enough genetic history there to say he's at least that. Let's get Kamala, though. What is she? We're going to Kamala to say, now, guess what? She's really not. She's really not. Her mom is Indian. She's a whole immigrant. Her her dad is Jamaican. Now. She went to an HBCU when she learned how to swim. Ethnically. And now, and now she thinks she's black. Ethnically, she's still black. I don't even know what that means. Well, what I mean by ethnically is. Hey, my, my grandmother was here. My grandfather was here. My great grandmother. Hey, I'm a, I'm a descendant of an American slave. Okay. And so like just in culture, vernacular, when we said black, we meant a black slave. And then after they passed immigration of 1969 and brought all these Africans over here, they came over here posing like us. And like, and you can get mad at me, but you came over here to try, you tried to step over me and you can't come into America and try to step over that. me. True. I That's am true. America, man. Hell. True. But I'm going somewhere with this. Hey, I agree hey, with all that. Lineage matters. I agree. I agree. You're not, hey bro, you're not even incorrect. I'm just going somewhere on how, guess what? Because of these things, we really are confused on what's black. So let's go ahead and define it right now. When we're really talking about blackness, because this is going to be the exact thing that gets you into the culture, so to speak, or the hip hop culture, whatever, Absolutely. when we get here is your people have had to have been slaves here that were raised here, that procreated here in the American system that has a lineage based here that they fought for and entered into Jim Crow through got there to get these fucking civil rights. Guess what? 
That's what we really talking that, about. That offends me. It offends me so bad. Because That's what we're talking about. We have these immigrants. Y'all come over here, DJ Academics. There's a lot of people in the media who are from uh, immigrant descent, right? And you say you're black. You say we're all black. But simultaneously behind you got a Haitian flag. Behind you got a Bahamanian flag. And so you're representing your nationality because you know where you're from. And I know where I'm from too. The United States of America, baby. Bred, born, and raised. I'm a descendant of an but American slave. You confusing this up? is why we're here because of the hip-hop culture because of the things that you gotta have a certain because we love entertainment and shucking and jiving so much if you got a little motherfucking groove in you which is from the african you know what i'm saying that's the african ancestry which we can share with these other people we're talking about we're allowed to have them infiltrate they can infiltrate without the fucking genetic past history and don't really we're all saying hey because biggie's fucking jamaican we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We wouldn't be having this conversation like we, foundational Black Americans, ADOS, American descendants of slaves. However, you want to call us, man. I'm, I'm, I was born here. My great great grandparents, American slaves. However, you want to have this conversation, it gets complicated, right? But we built this thing. We made it happen. The Civil Rights Act in 1965, it came on the backs of us. It ain't come on the backs of you. You were still wherever you was from. You were still in Jamaica. You were still in Haiti. You were still on the African continent, not even thinking about coming to America. And so when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you as your big brother, okay? I love you to death, but acknowledge that I'm your big brother. Don't try, hey, don't try to skip me in line, all right? Black folks played so good in America because they said it was the rite of passage. Russians go through it. Irish people go through it. Everybody goes through it. When we came to the black person, we didn't get to go through it. You opened up the, the, the floodgates and said, y'all immigrants, y'all come over here and y'all take the money that's supposed to go to these black Americans. And that's crazy. And, and now Kamala Harris, we get Barack Obama. His mother was white and his daddy was Nigerian. So his blackness was from another continent. OK, and then we're going to get this other lady who's full Indian and something else. She's a full immigrant. She's not a black American. We have never had a black American president. And so what are we doing, America? We're living in some type of twilight but she, zone. But, she, but, but again, she was raised in blackness. That's how she's able to come in. L listen, because we have such a bastard culture that we haven't gotten control of, this is allowed because I'll show you something. Tell her you, to take a black ass and be the president of Jamaica. We can't, we can't infiltrate. <laughs> I couldn't infiltrate Indian culture like that. They have a religion. They have everything that aligns up to make it difficult for that to be. Because ours source through in, because ours is sourced through entertainment and us buying into the racism that we don't belong here, that we're not assimilated into actual mainstream culture. Well, you make that point. That's what makes it sound so crazy. Because we look at her and because she's culturally black, we'll accept her as being black. But if I go to Jamaica, you're not going to accept me as no, no, no. Jamaican. <laughs> and that's all, I'm, that's all I'm saying. And in our terms skin of that. tone is the same. Now, let's get to where this is all fucked up. I've always been in American money. And where we have to choose a side <laughs> because black people, black people, you are more conservative than anything. Like you, you said this, that. A conservative white man is a straight black man's best friend. He is because guess what? We're more so aligned with that. So here's here's what you have to understand and define. You have to understand who we truly are and what we're really tied into. That pan-Africanism shit, that nationalism shit that you want, that needs to exit. Because guess what? You are an American. Foundational black American means you were a part of the building and the infrastructure. You made this point. We are mentioned in the Constitution. Speci we are specifically mentioned. Hi. I've been here since the beginning. <laughs> they didn't say nothing about no immigrant. They didn't say nothing about no goddamn on uh, uh, uh. I'm going to let you make it, right? All I'm saying is disrespect who I am. And then we can have a conversation. I, I was talking to a friend, right? And she was telling me about how she loves her Latino people. And I'm like, hell yeah, viva la raza, whatever it is that you believe in, congratulations. And then I said, I will support whatever it is that you want for your people as long as you support reparations. She asked me, she said, when did, when did you get so pro-black? I asked her, I said, when did you become so pro-Latina, huh? <laughs> Huh? How come you can love your people, but I can't love mine? Huh? How come you can love your nation and carry a Mexican flag, but I can't love mine? Can we have that conversation pretty, pretty, please? Black man, black woman, the issue of reparations is not a race issue. It's a federal government issue. Because a they lineage legis issue. They legislated what you went through. They legislated how you were going to exit. 
they are on the hook for. But we have to legitimize this through intellectual conversation. We can't just be up here saying, well, we need reparations because we haven't defined who's fucking black, which is how you get a Kamala Harris who can come in. And yes, I do believe that she has accepted and been a part of black culture. We can't deny that. However, not truly be connected to it enough to say, hey, the federal government owes you. But the way she kind of got over on his speech, which is why I believe she is going to be able to win. Go, she, go, oh, go ahead. She's talking That's about making That's the important. voting act a law. Go talk to Yvette Carnell. Yvette Carnell can break hey. all this down in a legal way. She can defend these positions in a legal way. I'm talking to you from a power way. I haven't. I, I just know that black Americans, we 13% of the total population. Ain't no other group more powerful than us except for white people. There are 200 million white folks and there's like 48 million of us. And so as long as Americans, originals, the OGs, stick together, we can make America the most brightest place ever. And if any immigrant has anything to say about what I'm saying, hey, I love the fact that you love where you're from. Now, love the fact that I love where I'm from. Huh? Yvette Cornell, shout out to Yvette Cornell because she has a person. lot of great information on Obama. That's who I initially got a lot of that stuff. And she's factual. This sister she is good. bright yeah, she good. and amazing. She so don't want to talk to me. I would hope that this message gets her. Love Yvette Cornell. Dear Yvette Cornell, come talk to me. <laughs> Those are the intellectuals in, that we to me. need to be listening to <laughs> in terms of a lot of this shit that's going on, man. Like, bro, this is the converse. This is why this conversation between you and I so, is so special because it's real. It's real and Kamala Harris is fake. <laughs> fake as a $3 bill. So where'd you come from, girl? I, I'm going to tell you what made that appearance. So we're going to get back to the baby because situation. Because she, she tried to delete the black experience. She said, my mother and my father, they met at a civil rights rally. Your mother and father met at a, at a civil rights rally. Kamala Harris, stop trying to steal the black identity and make it yours. Like it, it just is, it doesn't feel good. You wouldn't like it if I put a dot on my head and walked around and pretend to be you. Please don't pretend to be me. This is kind of where I haven't said this of yet. Well, you know what? I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I think this is where I'm not gonna critique Martin Luther King here. This is where I think I can define what he, the era he really understood he made. He did not make it all just a purely black issue. He started talking that for all shit. And then he realized, wait a minute, I didn't fucked up. I really have not given. The Negro is now in, in like intertwined into all this, these other movements, even when we talk about equality. And I haven't not, I have not really legitimized them to get them really in position to be able to, 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 compete financially to compete brother in these other brother places. martin specifically said go to appalachia and you're gonna see the poor white boy and so if the poor black man and the poor white boy understand that at the height of slavery only 10 percent of americans own slaves at the height of slavery so the poor black and the poor white was underneath the exact same economic system for example right now like 10 percent of americans own like all the americans all right Walmart, the United States government, Amazon. These are the people that control America. And so back then it was slave owners that controlled America. And so everyone in America was subservient to these very powerful people. Now it's white people and black people. If we have that conversation and then we can really propel America forward. Everyone else, you, you can say my people were there at, at very uh, minute margins. Just tell the truth. Like this is historically accurate. And y'all not going to like this at all. This might be a hot take. The true Americans are the white men and black people that were here that forged this motherfucker to be what it is. And there is historical written documentation of who those people are. <laughs> it's just what it is. We know who these people are. We have to define who true Americans are. And then we can talk immigration at a later date. But right now we need to really define Who's entitled to what here? Hey, y'all get so mad. I don't, I don't get, I don't care. Y'all get so mad. They talk about the Native American, the Native person. That becomes a convoluted conversation at right there. But when you talk about the, 
the uh what they call those tribes the five god dang on we own black slaves two ass tribes well let me let me go ahead and they went to war with the united states of america and they got slaughtered by the united states of america it wasn't Damn. no we okay, just i see where you're going with that <laughs> <laughs> I see man going shit with that. you went to war and lost stop playing with but me. i'm not discount i'm not discounting I'm the not native either. americans and mexicans who have been here who were here already, and they are indeed American. That's just my personal opinion. I'm on not that. going against what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Acknowledge Santa Ana went against the United States of America. Got punched in happen. the mouth. Nigga, go take your ass back. That that that, get, that did happen. And give me Texas while we're at it. God bless the United States of America, Texas, <laughs> and Houston specifically. <laughs> yeah. MLK is where I stay. That's you hear bad. me? But I'm just saying, like... Everyone else gets to be happy about where they're from. Kamala gets to be happy about where she's from. Can I be happy about where I'm from? I don't want to refer to Native American and Mexican people as alternative, but the only addition, I'll say, the only addition to this conversation would only be... I will allow them to argue their position. Right now, I'm arguing mine. When right. they talk about their history, they don't talk about me. And when I'm talking about my history, why am I going to talk about them? Fuck. But I, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> when we're talking about... We America, care. the United States of America, because it's from a historical context. When we when we get to talking about Indian of Indians who are traveling from real India, when we're talking about people that have, are not have not been here, that is the real immigration. Black Americans fight for everybody, bro. When, everybody. Hey, whenever there's an issue that's a non-white issue, it becomes a civil rights issue when you get your race hustling ass civil rights Al Sharptons and Jesse Jacksons to come and say oh, we need to save the black man when his people cosplaying as the being only black other men. cultural alignment yeah that we really hey, would. They, they only want to be black when there's some money attached to that's it. That's true. They don't want to be. They, you don't want to be black when a nigga's getting choked out. You don't want to be black then. But the only, the only, <laughs> the only other cultural alignment that would even make sense for us to fight for would be Latino, would be Hispanic, because they are growing closely with us. I'm just saying when we when we diversify the argument politically, black people do have to understand though we are American. Take take peel peel out the peel out the race part. And understand that when we talk about foundational blackness though there's a there is a level of entitlement we have to the united states prior the federal government owes. prior to 1965 no immigrant wanted to be acknowledged as black they was going to be whatever their nationality was prior to 1965 you did not want to be a nigga that's true <laughs> okay then after the niggas fought for civil rights everybody wants to be a nigga black they people. giving out money I, I want some you also got i ain't mean to cut you off Black people, Run you also got to understand, this is why affirmative action caught the caught the boot. Because <laughs> they knew that y'all not even taking advantage of it. More white more white women use affirmative action than any black person ever thought about using affirmative action. Dog. <laughs> Others are you have used that. This is what the Asian community was arguing. Like, hey, well, why shouldn't I get to get over here? Because I, I guess uh, if you're... And you know what? So... I don't know if you sent me this link. I think you did. That was in the uh, Ann Coulter link. I forgot the actress' name. You, do you know her name? I don't recall. Uh, the Indian actress, her brother, posed as someone Mindy. black. Mindy. Yeah, Mindy, whatever. I guess she was in the office or something like yeah. that. The, the, the dark-skinned her, Indian woman. Her brother posed as black to get into a, a medical school because he couldn't. It's Asian. And he said it. He's like, <laughs> my little scam, I pretend to be black because I knew I was going to get in. Nobody wants to be black until they can get paid off of that. And you got all these immigrants getting paid off the black back and black folks won't fight back. And you look at me like, why are you talking to me like that? Because it's nasty, man. It, for me, it feels surreal that an Indian Jamaican woman, they talking about she's going to be the first black woman. And they, where's, where's the Harriet Tubman $20 bills at? Huh? They play in the black woman's face. You have black. You have women pretending to be you, and you won't even stand up for yourself. Hey, dear black woman, fight back, huh? Stand up against all these people pretending to be black women and say no. <laughs> black women got to turn pro marriage and stop being pro LGBT because if you're pro LGBT, and I'm and I'm not I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to the LGBT community. 
I'm simply saying that because they're pro something that is not aligned with conventional families and actually having a, a core oh, family, bro. I they can always I got, be lost. I want to just, why in the world am I supposed to interject or be a, a advocate for something that I don't agree with That's or true. participate in? That is true. Why am I supposed to care about their feelings? That when they true. talk about abolishing babies, because that's what you really want to do when you make a decision to live like that. You say, no babies forever, like Kamala Harris. No babies forever. That's the argument that you're making. And so why am I supposed to support that argument? You don't support the pro-life argument. I like babies. Let's make more babies. Go find a man or a woman the opposite gender of you and make love and have more babies. Because America needs children because we're competing with the rest of the world and the rest of the world ain't playing. Because, you know, for me, I'm just going to always, I feel like the truth is already uh, harsh enough. I don't have to, you know, I always layer with, hey, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to be mean to whoever. But the truth is, I don't agree with this. I don't support this. I'm not for it. I don't like how it's woven into society. I'm not trying to hurt. I mean, that's just the niceness in me. But to be totally honest, I'm going to stand on business and say, no, nah, I don't support that movement. I'm not a part of it. This is what I believe. I believe convention. I said this on my channel. I said that a man and a woman, one, that is the only real sex. And that's the only <laughs> real marriage. Everything, everything else is not two. That's not sex. Everything else is fornication to a man and a man. That's not sex. It's the, it's simply the, Seeking pleasure. That's it. That's it. No, no. True sex is between a man and a woman when they come together. And yes, they can have kids. All that other shit is bullshit. It's not real. You're not having, when you're fucking a man, you're not having sex. <laughs> you're not having sex when you, that's, y'all say love is love. I don't. It's exaggerated. It's exaggerated masturbation. It's, it's, that's what it is like. Okay. Because true love, the way love. I don't care about see, how see nobody slain the Wayne Tang, see, man. Do your thing. Speaking the truth is harsh enough. It, so it's like. I have to layer it with, hey, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but you didn't have to look it like that. They just, <laughs> they out there, they just out there, just wild. It is. We need to have interesting conversations and engage, and like how we actually make America be the best place ever. The whole world is fighting to be powerful, and so right now, if we was going to have a, a battle royale between world leaders, hypothetically, because she's not the world leader right now, right? Right. Uh, between Putin and South Korea, cat. <laughs> with all these world leaders you you taking Kamala Harris in, in, a, in a fight in a battle royale between world leaders I think that's a question for America <laughs> this person is going to be the commander in chief of the United States military honestly if I okay so again this is where I offer my balanced opinion what's up so I don't want people to think I'm an extremist even though I'm, I'm, I'm a lot conservative it's like it's like this though I think when they come down to protecting the bag there's enough white men behind her last say, hey, we're going to press this button. Hold on. I, want to, I just want to just, <laughs> hey, just cut it out. Cut it out. Go ahead. When you at home with your woman, is she supposed to go and whoop the bad guy? No, it's supposed to be me. Okay. Is any, every man in America knows that every man has to defend Kamala. That's it. Okay. I don't, I don't, be, stop playing about her being the president. Just, if she's yeah. going in the grocery store, she can't defend herself in the grocery store. And you're going to tell me that she's going to be the commander in chief of the most powerful military in the history of the world. And she don't even like babies. It's a <laughs> hey, look, I'm just saying, hey, when America got to go, I think they going in. However, comma, I think I don't think that's the detriment here. I think the detriment is what you just said. It's the legislation of killing babies and gender affirming therapy. It's those things that Tim Walls is for that I'm totally and really against and uh, the whole transgender movement because it's confusing. It's not right. Um, there's only two genders and we have gone into a place to where we are really believing that there are different things. But honestly, that hey. really became that, that. You know what it is? That's because of the legislation of gay marriage. Just be careful of any person who's advocating for something that they don't participate in. Just look at them like, hey, why are you saying that? Why? Why are you saying that? Do you do that in your in your like in your spare time? Is that how you get down? You be flipping salads. Hey, this has been a wonderful episode. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, the Charm Hour right here. Make sure you tune in to the Charm Hour. Like and subscribe. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.